Hello every pony scar 89 here once again with another fan fiction reading. Today I'll be continuing My Little Caboose Blue is Magic. Uh so yeah, without further ado, chapter 11. Um Rainbow gets dashed. Okay. I'm trying to remember how it goes. Oh, yeah. Uh, damn it! Tucker muttered, covering, uh, covered with scrapes and bruises. This sucks. Do we have to do this right now? If you want to sleep in an actual bed, then yes, Rainbow Dash stated hotly, laying on a cloud with her arms behind her head. But I heard the ground can be pretty comfy, too. Uh. T Laver <laughs> Lavernius Tucker does not sleep on the ground. Tucker yelled, shooting up into the air. Hey, I'm doing it! Tucker then grabbed onto a cloud and stopped flapping his wings before he got on. Fuck! Tucker yelled in despair as he landed on his head, and Rainbow Dash burst with laughter. Uh, You're pretty good at flying, you know that? Rainbow Dash said, wiping a tear out of her eyes. You could help me, you know, Tucker complained, getting up. Hey, I just have to watch you. Celestia said nothing about he helping, Rainbow Dash said with a smirk. This is my first day here. How the hell am I supposed to learn to fly in ten minutes? Tucker yelled. Trust me, there's a lot of things I could do in ten seconds flat. Rainbow Dash boasted. Same with me. They just usually involve women and a lot of moaning, Tucker said with a smirk. Oh, Tucker... Rainbow Dash raised an eyebrow, and Tucker winked at her. Rainbow Dash then shook her head, understanding what he meant. If you think you're getting any, you are going to be sorely disappointed. Oh, now I understand. You're a but, er, uh, you're a butch, aren't you? Tucker said. Excuse me? Rainbow Dash yelled with anger. Anger? You know what I mean. You obviously have a thing for ladies. Tucker said. But don't worry about it. I find that stuff hot. Maybe we can even snag a. A uh, snag, a minage, a tra trowis? What? That makes no sense. Bow chicka bow wow! Rainbow Dash snarled and jumped on the cloud, sending a lightning bolt which tuck struck Tucker. Ow! What the fuck was that for? Tucker asked, then got up. Oh, right. But hey, you aren't being any help, so you will have to suffer through me. T Rainbow Dash opened her mouth to object. Uh, Princess orders, Tucker quickly interjected with a tight smirk. <sighs> Suffer through me. I'm surprised he did not do bow chicka bow wow there. Hmm. Rainbow Dash glared, and they both started to laugh. You know, you're an all right guy, Rainbow Dash said. Aside from the whole idiot thing, I was about to say the same thing about you, Tucker said. But replace idiot with bitch. Rainbow Dash sighed and flew to the ground. All right, I was tired of waiting for you anyways, Rainbow Dash said. Okay, the first thing you need to do is focus. Without focus, you may as well just quit right now. Oh, really? I thought the first step would be, uh, would be... <laughs> Sorry. Oh, really? I thought the first step would be to make sweet, sweet love, Tucker said sarcastically. Focus, Rainbow Dash grunted, striking Tyker on the back of the head. Damn it, all right. I'm tired of getting hurt anyways, Tucker said, straightening up. Good. The second step is to start flapping your wings, Rainbow Dash explained. Oh, really? That wasn't obvious, Tucker said. I could just fly away right now, you know, Rainbow Dash said. Yeah, Tucker agreed, then winked at Rainbow Dash. But you won't. Are you finally going to start listening and shut up, Rainbow Dash said, smiling softly. Sure, Tucker said. If you actually start giving... Uh, giving me advice that will help. Fine, Rainbow Dash said, picking up Tucker and flying straight up in the air. Wait, er, wait, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Tucker yelled against the pressure of the wind. Uh, you want advice or not, Rainbow Dash asked, stopping miles above the ground. Well, yeah, Tucker said. Here's your advice, Rainbow Dash yelled, dropping Tucker. Fly! You f er, you're fucking kidding me! Tucker yelled, falling down. He judged the distance from the ground, and he guessed he had roughly 30 seconds. He started to fall faster as he turned his body to a nosedive. This better fucking work, he yelled, opening up his wings. 
The quickly approaching ground started to grow with less speed as he pulled up from the dive and started traveling parallel to the ground, but his victory was short-lived as he was now flying straight toward a tree. He flipped his wings, flapped his wings once, with as much force as he could muster, which allowed him to soar just out of harm's way. Hey! I'm doing it! Tucker yelled. You're gonna eat it now, Dash! Tucker flapped on his side and focused his head up, which meant... Uh, which made him do a sharp turn, heading straight for Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash yelled, quickly turning around to fly away from Tucker. She flew as fast as she could for ten seconds, and she turned around, expecting Tucker to have fallen behind. What she didn't know, however, was that Tucker had actually been moving faster than her. Tucker wrapped his wings around her and plum <laughs> plummeted toward the ground. Got you! That's what you think, Rainbow Dash smir smirked. She then used all of her force to pull up from the downward spiral and exerted so much pressure that Tucker felt as if he had just exploded forward. And when he looked behind him, he could see a multicolored explosion with a trail of rainbows leading right up to them. "'What are you doing?' Tucker asked. "'What?' Rainbow Dash yelled, throwing him off of her. "'Afraid you can't keep up?' "'Nope,' Tucker yelled smugly back to her. "'I'm afraid you can't keep up with me!' Tucker then pulsed, uh, pulsed forward, using an unknown source of energy, and Rainbow heard a loud bang, much like the sound of thunder. She turned around and saw a trail of white light and electricity pushing Tucker, Tucker forward. You've got to be kidding me, Rainbow Dash said, jaw, jaw, jaw dropping. She shook her head and pushed forward, trying to escape Tucker. She felt a small nip of electricity on her ankle, and when she turned, she saw Tucker holding on to it. Give it up, Tucker asked. Not quite, Rainbow Dash laughed. Ugh. Rainbow Dash then stopped abruptly and kicked her leg in front of her, using Tucker's speed against him. Tucker realized this and got launched forward, screaming. He then slammed into a tree upside down and slowly slid down. Uh, Rainbow Dash flew down to Tucker, who was now on the ground. That was a lot of down in that... A lot of the word down in that paragraph, just saying. Feel, feel like save, uh, saying anything now? Rainbow Dash laughed. No, not really. Nothing other than I totally schooled you. That's because I was going easy on you, Rainbow Dash said. So was I, Tucker retorted, getting up. My back is fucking killing me, though. Let's go back to my place, Rainbow Dash said, lowering her hoof and, t lowering her hoof and Tucker grabbed it. That sentence doesn't make any sense. I think you've earned the right to sleep there. Oh, yeah. Uh, time for some hot pony action, Tucker exclaimed. Rainbow Dash blushed a little, then shook it off and laughed. Not quite. You can sleep in my bed, but that's because I don't have anywhere else for you to sleep. We aren't going to do anything. Ah, oh, way to be a buzzkill, Tucker said with a smile. Oh, well. My balls still probably haven't healed yet anyway. Quit being a crybaby and let's go. Rainbow Dash said, flying away, closely followed by Tucker. And what's the tip? Okay. Chapter 12. Suit up! Rarity kept wishing that he would just decide to leave, but he didn't. She didn't need a strange stallion that she does not know to come in and interrupt her work. She kept wondering why Celestia had made Simmons need to stay with her. Simmons, however, did not speak, because he thought since all the women he had been involved with recently, Texan Carolina, had been completely crazy nutjobs, that he should not expect differently of this one, even if she was a pony. Rarity and Simmons walked up for a half an hour in a couple in complete and total silence. That suited them both fine, but after the walk they find themselves in front of the carousel boutique. Here it is. Oh, well, my voice cracked badly, though. Here it is, Rarity said, opening the, do opening the door. There is a couch on the door. There's a couch by the door for you to sleep. I apologize for the mess. I've been meaning to clean it up, but I have a very important client coming in the next few days, and I need to get working on their order. Okay, Simon said, looking up at the mess with cu a curious eye. Curious eye. Do you need any help with anything? No. Rarity said, shutting the door to her room. Simons let out a brief sigh and sat on the couch. He then looked around the room and shook his head. 
He then decided that the best option was to sleep until morning. The problem was, however, that he was restless and did not know why. A couple hours later, while Rarity was in her room sewing some fabrics together. Yes, this is coming together fabulously. It just needs one more thing, Rarity said, reaching into a box of gems and felt around. No, 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 this won't do, this won't do at all. Where is the sapphire? She then let out a small sigh, having a feeling that it was lost in the clutter downstairs. Rarity stared at the dress, thinking if it could be pulled off without it. No, Rarity said with determination. They are paying for perfection. And with that, she went downstairs to look through the mess to see if she could find it. But when she opened the door, she saw si Simmons on the ground with a small cloth, rubbing away some grime off the floor. Rarity slowly went downstairs and looked at Simmons. You cleaned up the you cleaned the place up? Rarity asked quietly. Oh yeah, I hope you don't mind, Simmons said, not expecting her to talk to him. I just have a small and extremely severe case of obsessive compulsive disorder. If something isn't as good as it can be, then I can't sleep, and the only way to fix that is to make it look better. I completely understand, Rarity said. If the end product of one of my pieces is off by the slightest bit, then I try again. In fact, that's why I'm down here. I'm looking for a small sa sapphire, maybe the size of my hoof. Did you happen to see it while you were tidying up? Uh, I think so. Hang on, Simon said, reaching in a box that he tucked under the table. Is this it? Sorry again that my Simon's is bad. I haven't heard Simon's voice for or Simmons voice for a while, so it's a little jumbled up in my mind. Okay. Yes, Rarity exclaimed. I can't even begin to thank you, Sa Simmons. Without this sapphire, my whole dress would be have been would have been completely ruined. Sorry, it won't happen again, Simon said with a sigh. Wait a second. Did you say thank you? Yes. Why wouldn't I? Rarity said. It would have taken me hours to find it, and thanks to you, my dress is saved. It's just that usually when I try to do something helpful, Sarge usually yells at me, uh, telling me I'm wasting my time, Simmons said. Well, maybe Sarge just needs to learn how to appreciate you, Rarity said, kissing Simon on the cheek, who held back a nervous blush. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cute. Okay. Say, are you feeling tired? Not particularly. Simon said quietly. Why? Well, now that my dress is finished with that with this sapphire, I can start working on the other things they ordered, Rarity said, inspecting Simmons. And I do believe you are the same build as she ordered, so that would make everything a lot easier. Sure, why not? Simmons said, walking up the stairs, then slowly. You won't use needles, will you? Well, yes, Rarity said, stopping on top of the stairs. Why? Well... It's just that I'm afraid of them, Simon said. So I'm kind of nervous about flinching and getting stabbed by them. Well, I do have a small spell I've been working on, Rarity said. What if it, uh, what it does when I use it to freeze the pony in place, concentrating the, er, constraining them? They can still talk and breathe safely, though, so you don't have to worry. All right, why not, Simon said, walking to the top of the stairs. Just take a step up on the platform there while I grab some materials, Rarity said. Rarity grabbed a needle, thread, and some black silk. She saw Simmons star uh, staring at the needle, so she decided to start using the spell. When she started to do it, her horn started glowing, and Simmons found himself unable to jump backwards from surprise. Uh, hey, I think it's working, Simmons said. Rarity just flashed him a quick smile and went to work. She worked on the suit for an hour, holding Simmons in place the entire time, which was beginning to drain her energy. Simmons looked at Rarity, who was growing pale. Uh, maybe we should stop for the night. That holding spell seems to be making you tired, Simmons said, trying to get her to stop. The dress can wait until tomorrow. Just one more hour, Rarity yawned. It's almost done! Rarity then closed her eyes, focusing on breaking the spell, and after a lot of effort, Simmons' horn started to glow. Rarity took no notice until Simmons made the spell wear off. What did you do that for? Rarity yawned. The dress is looking great, and it just needs a few more. <laughs> the spell was beginning to wear you out, Simmons said, but before Rarity could speak out, uh, speak out, she shook, he shook his head. I like making everything perfect, 
but working on anything while you're tired might make it not go as well as you planned. Rarity nodded her head and took the incomplete silk suit off of Simmons. I suppose you're right, Rarity said, voice hoarse. It can wait until tomorrow. Sleep well, Simon Simmons, and thanks again for all the help. No problem. Good night, Simmons yawned, walking up, walking down the stairs and climbing onto the couch. Chapter 13 Memories Well, Church, I guess it's just us now, Twilight said. Yeah, Church said, walking into Twilight's house. Just us. I'll show you where you'll be sleeping, okay? Twilight said. Yeah, whatever, Church grumbled. Uh, what's with all the, uh, what's with all the talking, Twy? Spike said, coming down the stairs, yawning and stretching his arm, arms. Who's the new guy? Oh, this is Church. He's a new stallion in town, Twilight said. Church, meet Spike. He's my assistant and one of my oldest friends. He's also a baby dragon. You don't say, Church said. Spike and Church glared at each other apprehensively, seemingly trying to read each other's thoughts. Hi, Church grunted. Hey! Spike grunted back. Okay, Twilight said nervously, sensing the tension in the room. Church, if you follow me, I'll show you where you'll be sleeping tonight. If it's all the same to you, I think I'm going to go for a walk, Church said, walking towards the door. You know, to clear my mind a little. Oh, okay, Twilight said. Church opened the door and left, closing the door behind him. Twilight, you don't think the guy seems a little... Off? Spike said. What do you mean, Spike? Twilight asked. I'm not sure, Spike said. All I know for certain is that I don't trust him. You should keep a close eye on him, Twilight. Well, that's what Princess Celestia has asked us to do. Each of us got a stranger that we have to keep an eye on. Where did they come from? Spike asked. I don't know, Twilight said, looking at the door to her house. But I think I need to find out. Uh... Oh, this is Church saying. Okay, I thought it was Caboose for a second. What the fuck was Caboose thinking? Church muttered to himself, walking toward a stream. He then sat down and watched the water flow gently down the stream. For a moment, he swore he saw text. He brought his hoof forward, reaching out for her. But before he touched the water, he retracted his leg and let out a sigh. I miss you, Tex, Church said to the reflection, which then seemingly drifted away. Who are you talking to? Twilight asked, calmly, calmly approaching Church. Nobody, Church said. Don't worry about it. What are you doing out here? I came to find you, Twilight said. Why? Church asked bluntly. Am I not allowed to have some place for once in my damned life? Twilight was about to say something, but then lowered her head, breaking eye contact with Church. Oh, sorry. I'll leave you be, Twilight said. Church watched her turn around. Listen, Twilight, I'm sorry, Church said. I didn't mean to be rude. It's just, everything that has gone on in the past couple years is starting to take its toll on me. Have things really been going that bad for you? Twilight asked. You don't even know the start of it, Church grunted. I'd like to, Twilight said, intrigued to hear more about the stallion that she had to watch. Church looked in her eyes and saw that she was genuinely interested. Might as well take a seat, because it's a long story, Church said, sitting down. Twilight followed his head. I guess it all started back in a canyon, called Blood Gulch. Church then spent the next... Oh, sorry. Church then spe spent the next few hours recalling and telling Twilight about everything that had happened, not leaving anything out. He told her about the freelancers, the Epsilon unit, and how it related to him, how he was actually an artificial intelligence based off of someone's... Uh, based off... Of someone from the original's past, Twilight listened intently, trying to soak in as much as she could. She flinched occasionally at the more intense parts. She especially flinched when Church told her that he witnessed the meta stab Tex in the face with the suit, with the unit, which he thought had killed her. And when I finally let her go, the others dragged me out to be, f uh, to be face to face with Carolina who told me she wanted to kill the director and, uh, and effectively me, Church said, shivering. And as if it could go any worse, 
Caboose then plunged himself into the unit and ended up dragging me back, right back in. Except this time the world was filled with bright ponies, and now I'm listening. Now I'm sitting on the ground talking to one of them. Wow, Twilight said at a loss for words. Yeah, Church said. Wow. When you told me things were bad, I assumed you were telling the truth, Twilight said. But this? That is a lot of one. Or that is a lot for one pony to handle. Tell me about it, Church said, standing up, reaching a hoof towards Twilight. So, how haven't you? Well, Twilight started to ask, grabbing his hoof to hoist herself up. Died, Church asked, which Twilight responded to with a nod. As I've said, I'm an artificial intelligence, not quite a real person, but still somehow holding on to some degree of humanity. So you can never die? Twilight asked curiously. Pretty much, Church replied honestly. Do you still love her? Twilight asked. Tex, I mean? Yeah, Church sighed, staring towards Twilight's place. But I'm not sure if I would really call it that. I mean, I was programmed to love her. But that's basically how I feel. I feel that it isn't a real love. That it's being forced down my throat. Twilight nodded at Church, trying to understand what he meant. So that's my st or so that's my story, and I pretty much told you everything I could, Church said. You know, I read, I read a book about love once, Twilight said. One of the lines really stuck out to me, and it made me think. Oh yeah? Church said, letting out a depressing sigh. What did it say? It said, A great love is a lot like a good memory. When it's there, and you know it's there, but it's not, but it's just out of your reach, it can be all that you think about. You can focus on it and try to force it, but the more you do, the more you seem to push it away. But if you're patient and you hold still, maybe, just maybe, it'll come to you, Church finished, smiling brightly at Twilight who was smiling in return. Chapter 14 Sleepover What is Sugar Cube Corner? Caboose asked, falling suit with Pinky. It's the gingerbread house, you silly goose! Pinky said. You live in a gingerbread house? Caboose yelled. This is the most amazing story I ever heard. Can you tell it again? <laughs> Maybe later! Pinky giggled happily. There were a there were a short walk away from getting to the sugar cube corner, but Pinkie Pie decided to take the long route. Are we there yet? Caboose asked, getting tir tired of walking. Nope, Pinkie said happily. Caboose kept quiet for half a minute. How about now? Caboose asked. Pinkie rolled her eyes playfully. We're here, Pinkie said. Yay! Caboose said, starting to run up to the closest house. I was kidding, Caboose! Pinky said, jumping on him, tackling er, tackling him to the ground, and started laughing. I thought you knew what it looked like. Oh, Caboose laughed with a yawn. Now I just feel silly. Maybe I shouldn't have taken the long way, Pinky said with a smile. You're really starting to look pooped. I don't mind, Caboose said. I like walking with you. Pinky blushed and got up off of Caboose and started to take the direct route to the sugar cube corner. Caboose got up and quickly hopped next to her. Uh, who is saying this? I think this is Twilight. Yeah, this, or this is Pinky. Yeah. You know, as much as I love Twilight and the others, I feel as if I can really be myself around them. I can't really be myself around them. But with you, I feel as if I can really let loose. Sometimes I like to pretend that I'm really a superhero around others, Caboose said. They usually tell me to stop after I keep asking where the phone booth is, but I still find the fun, find it fun. Ugh, there was a hair in my mouth. <laughs> Pinky and Caboose soon arrived at their set destination, and Pinky opened the door. You're really fun, you know that, Caboose? Pinky asked. Thank you, Pinky. Caboose blushed, which made Pinky giggle. Pinky then leaned in and kissed Caboose on the cheek, which made him fall to the ground again. I'm glad you're here, Caboose, Pinky giggled, helping him up. I don't think I'm I've ever met any pony like you. I don't think I've ever met any pony like me either, Caboose said, letting out a large yawn. I'm tired. I can see that, Pinky giggled. Why don't we, uh, we don't have a guest bedroom, so I guess you'll have to sleep on my bed, 
Caboose stared at her passively for a couple of seconds. Then his face broke out in a huge grin. Oh boy, he yelled. A sleepover! Pinky giggled at Caboose. She then walked to the open... <laughs> Sorry. P Pinky giggled at Caboose. She then walked to and opened the door to her room, which had cupcakes plastered over everything. Uh, Caboose smiled and then started to jump on the bed. Pinky giggled and started jumping on the bed with him. Caboose then fell backwards on the bed and yawned again. Pinky stopped jumping and laid down on the bed next to Caboose. Good night, Boosie! Good night, Pinky, Caboose said, closing his eyes. Pinky looked at Caboose, who was already drifting off. She smiled and laid her head next to his and soon fell asleep, cuddling up to Caboose. Oh, those are so cute because they're like they're like little children, like when two little children sleep and they're uh, taking a nap, and it's kind of cute. I think it's kind of cute. Anyway, Caboose walked, uh, woke up the next morning and looked around the room. He looked next to him and noticed that Pinky wasn't there. Pinky, Caboose asked, "Where are you?" "I'm ba uh, I'm baking right now. I'll be up there in a sec." Pinky said from downstairs. Pinky, Caboose asked, looking down the at the floor. When did you become the ground? The door of the room then opened and Mrs. Cake poked her head in. Oh, hello, Caboose. How are you today? Uh, I can't do Mrs. Cake. I don't know why. Mrs. Cake asked. Oh, hello, Mrs. Icing Lady. I'm doing great, Caboose replied, then switched to a quiet whisper. Did you know that Pinky Pie is the ground? What are you talking about? Mrs. Cake asked, looking at him with a raised eyebrow. Pinky is downstairs working. Oh, oh, Caboose said. She lives and works here. Uh, come on downstairs and we'll get you a bite to eat. Mrs. Cake nodded. For some reason, my Mrs. Cake kind of just changed voices there for a second. Anyway. I'm really hungry, though, Caboose said, stomach rumbling. Do you think I could have more than one bite? Mrs. Cake smiled and shook her head. Sure, Caboose. Come on down. Come on down. I can't do Mrs. Cake. I'm so sorry. It makes me mad. Caboose jumped off the bed and sprinted out the door, making his way downstairs to see Pinky. He then ran out the front door and looked around. Uh, this house is huge. Pinky, are you here? Caboose yelled, not realizing he was outside. I'm over here, silly, Pinky said, taking some baked goods out of the oven. Want a cupcake? A cupcake? For breakfast, Caboose said quietly. This is the greatest place ever! Caboose ran back into the house and grabbed a couple cupcakes and started munching on them. Boy, you're really hungry! Pinky said, taking a cupcake for herself. Caboose stuffed the rest of his cupcake into his mouth. That's what she said, starting to choke. Uh... Wait. Yeah! <laughs> Caboose then swallowed and... Er, Caboose then swallowed them and cleared his throat. Sorry, my mouth was full. I do that sometimes. I said, yeah, I, I really was hungry. Pinky smirked and shook her head. Well, I'm done for the day. What do you want to do? I don't know. What can we do? Well, Applejack stopped by and picked up a lot of treats because she challenged Sarge to an eating contest. We could go and watch them, Pinky suggested. Hey, yeah, that sounds like fun, Caboose said, grabbing Pinky's hoof. Pinky just smiled and walked out the door with him, making their way to Sweet Apple Acres. They soon got there and saw a small crowd standing in a circle, most of whom were part of the Apple family. Caboose, the, uh, Caboose and Pinky managed to squeeze ahead of everybody to watch the contest. Twenty bits on the new guy, one stallion said. I'll take that bet, another said, shaking his head. Sarge cracked his neck and was getting ready. Hey, Sarge, Caboose said, standing next to him. Oh, hey, Caboose, Sarge said, not turning to greet him, focused on the upcoming battle of stomachs. Come to watch me win? Uh, that was weird. I don't know why I can't do Sarge today for something. Yeah, I guess so, Caboose replied with a smile. Y'all ready to shut up and eat, Sarge? Applejack asked with a grin. Depends, Sarge said, staring Applejack down. You ready to lose? Oh, you ready to lose? In your dreams, hothead, Applejack replied. And I think I'll read just one more chapter, and then I'll be finished for the day slash night, because, I don't know. Anyway, so, chapter 15, showdown. On the count of three, you will shake hooves and then begin. You have 15 different dishes to finish. 
first one to finish wins, Granny Smith said. That was terrible. One, er, one. Applejack and Sarge both, both took a seat at the table, eyeing each other intensely. Ready? Applejack asked. More than you'll ever be, Sarge replied with a smile. That was terrible, Sarge. I don't know why I'm not doing so good today. Applejack then glared at Sarge. Two, Granny Smith said. Applejack started rubbing her hoofs together, and Sarge put his hoof behind his head and cracked his neck. You're going down, Applejack said. Sarge just smiled and shook his head. Uh, what number was it? Was I at again? Granny Smith asked. Muffin, Caboose replied playfully. All right, three, Granny Smith said. Good luck, Sarge, Applejack said, putting a hoof over the table to uh, shake. Don't need it, but you will, Sarge said, grabbing Applejack's hoof. He then pulled her forward, making her gasp and lose her balance and focus. Sarge took advantage of this and slammed his face into the plate, stuffing in as much as he could. Applejack quickly glanced at him and set to work. Applejack looked up after she had finished the, her first plate and saw that Sarge was completing his third plate. Applejack grunted as she grabbed the pie that was on her plate and shoved it into her mouth and started chewing. She then slowly put her hooves on her throat and started choking. Sarge noticed this and jumped over the table. Applejack! Applebloom yelled worriedly. worriedly. Applejack was now on the ground, wheezing and flailing her back legs, eyes watering. Sarge knelt next to her and started and stared at her, not knowing what to do. So he started to push her chest. On the second push, Applejack stopped choking and pushed Sarge to the ground and jumped back on, to, on the bench and grabbed the third plate and started eating. That cheater! <sighs> Sarge is going to win. I mean, Sarge is the coolest guy ever. Sarge glared at her, then jumped over the table and started eating again. Sarge and Applejack were soon neck and neck. Seven finished for Applejack, nine for Sarge. Ten for Applejack, just as Sarge finished his fourteenth plate. Granny Smith rung the bell. Sarge dropped his plate, leaned back, and burped. Looks like I get twenty bits, said one pony in the background. The other pony looked down and mumbled, handling, handing some coins to the other pony. Applejack went one, Granny Smith exclaimed, holding up Applejack's leg. Looks like you were just blown hot air, huh, sugar? Applejack asked smugly. Yeah, well, you cheated, Sarge mumbled. So did you, Applejack retorted. Sarge glared at Applejack, face like stone. He then let out a rough laugh. Soon, Applejack burst out with laughter. You know, it's not to have somebody, some pony, who... <laughs> Sorry, it should say some pony, but it says somebody. So I'm just going to imp... I'm just going to change it. You know, it's not to have some pony who can pose a challenge to me. Applejack said. I know what you mean, Sarge said back, extending his hoof to shake for real this time. Tell you what, you agree that I smoked you cl uh, collecting apples? Then I'll agree that you won the eating contest. Sounds fine with me, Applejack said with a laugh. Let's say we make it best two out of three. I was thinking three out of five, Sarge said with a laugh. You got it, you got it, partner, Applejack said with a nod. Uh, that was close, uh, that was a close one, Applejack, Pinky said, congratulating her. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Applejack said back to Pinky. I was so scared, Kaboo said. When you were choking on the pie, I thought you were possessed by a demon baby. Oh, and what exactly is wrong with b- Applejack stared to, started to ask with her brow raised, but was cut short by Sarge, who was holding her mouth shut, shaking his head uh, viciously. Uh, that would have been an extreme, extremely terrible mistake on your part, Sarge grunted. Oh, and why is that? Applejack asked, laughing. But when she looked at Sarge, she could see the slightest bit of fear in his eyes. Uh, you do not want to know. Just trust me. I lost my place for some reason. Oh, okay. Applejack stared at him and just nodded, starting to feel a bit nervous. What could Caboose do? Uh, or what could Caboose do that would scare Sarge so much? He seems extremely brave. So, what do you want to do now? Pinky asked Caboose. Oh, I don't know. Caboose said. How about we see that Sar? How about we see what Sarge is doing? Sarge looked down and faced Hoof while shaking his head slowly. 
Well, Sarge, what do you reckon we do now? Applejack asked. We've almost gone and finished harvesting the apples, thanks to you, so uh, we have some time to waste. I don't know, Sarge grunted and sighed. I miss Donut. He would have had something to do by now. Uh, how about we go and see the other? what the others are up to, Pinky asked. Sounds good to me, Applejack said. Sarge? Yeah, uh, whatever. Might as well make sure the others haven't blown anything up. I just realized something, Caboose said. I'm not wearing any pants. C uh, Caboose, no one is wearing pants, Sarge sighed. Oh my gosh, Caboose exclaimed, looking at every pony and Sally. No one is wearing pants. Pinkie Pie started giggling. Applejack and Sarge then looked at each other and started laughing as well. Soon all of them were on the ground laughing hysterically. Ah, oh, Caboose, you're a weird one, you know that? <coughs> oh, doing Sarge is starting to hurt my voice now. Sarge said, trying to stop laughing. But in a good way. Hey, thanks, Sarge, Caboose said. I don't think I've ever heard you compliment anybody. I feel so special. That's because you are special, Sarge said with a smirk. Thanks, Sarge, Caboose said happily. That wasn't a compliment, Sarge said jokingly. Low enough so Caboose didn't hear, but loud enough so Applejack did. Applejack let out a small chuckle and a weary smile, but then caught herself and stopped. She then elbowed Sarge lightly in the chest, shaking her head. You don't have to be mean, Applejack whispered to Sarge. Caboose seems like a sweet kid. Not the smartest in the barrel apples, but sweet. <laughs> Sorry, old habits die hard, Sarge whispered back, then raised his voice back to normal. Oh well, let's go then. I'm sure Griff has done something stupid by now. And that will conclude my reading for now. I'll record another chapter later. Um, uh, yeah, I, 30, almost 37 minutes in about 5 seconds. So let's get that, just waiting for, just wasting 5 seconds now, doing nothing. Yeah, there we go, 37 minutes exactly. So, um, thanks for watching my video, I guess. Um, like I say all the time, uh, I'll record another chapter or another story. You can listen to that, or you can listen to my other videos. Um, I highly recommend, uh, like I said in my last video, I highly recommend you go check out Multi Fanfic a day or Brony Fanfic. They're people who do much better readings than I do. They read different stories than I do uh, as well, and they're a lot better at it than I am. Um, and yes, I'm just doing this because I do have Multi Fanfic on Skype and, uh, right now, but he's muted, and I just want him to hear this so he, because I'm, you know, hamming it up because. I'm a douchebag sometimes. Why did I say that? Anyway, um, yeah, I'm whoring them up. That's all I'm saying. I'm whoring them up. So, um, yeah, we'll record another chapter. We'll record another story. You can check that out later or when it's up. We can check out one of my other stories. But until then, I will see you guys later.